I learned that as deep as a wound is, that's how deep the healing can be. I heard that statement made by a woman named Mary Carr, and she is an author among other things. And by the way, kind of tangentially, um, I heard her speak in an interview with Krista Tippett, and I love the interviews that Krista Tippett does. She gets the most amazing people from all over the planet. Krista Tippett has a website called onbeing.org, and there's a lot of like blog posts and things, but she, every week she posts a, an audio as well, an interview, and I am often touched by what I hear there and provoked to thought by what I hear there. And so Mary Carr and this statement was one of those. As deep as the wound is, that's how deep the healing can be. Now, oddly enough, I actually came to understand this myself on my own, just in th through the experiences of my life, and I had an image for myself that helped me. I, I had this centered around my heart, although healing is for the whole body and the whole world, but I imagined that my pain had kind of dug this hole out of my heart, like it was missing. There were pieces of my heart missing, right? But I started to realize as time continued to go by that there was, that hole was getting filled up and that hole was getting filled up with joy and how deep that hole went was how deep the joy went as well, especially once I learned joy. And I'm still learning joy. <laughs> All right, so, so yeah. I also wrote in another way and how I would like to um, relate this to world peace uh, it's definitely a personal principle, but also thinking about all the wounds that we have and the bloodshed that is still going on today, the oppression that is still alive and well today, all the other crazy that we're still in the middle of today, the wounds of this earth collectively into the past and still being planted for the future. A lot of people think that doom is our end, that the world is somehow going to blow up or some kind of end of the world. What, however people imagine that. And that destruction is our, gonna be our harvest. And I'm gonna tell you that I disagree. I will tell you how the story will end. And this is the, how the story will end, no ifs or buts. The story will end with all of us forgiving one another. The story will end in mercy. I know this. There is no other end to the story. Because if we haven't arrived at forgiveness and mercy, the story isn't over. Okay? So the question is not whether or not we will forgive each other. And we will. And it might only be because we're exhausted. I'd like to think that we would forgive for more nobler, nobler reasons. But we will forgive from exhaustion for no other reason. We will become tired of harming each other. It doesn't seem like it, but that's what's going to be happening. And we will at the very least pick, you know, drop our swords and pick pick up our plowshares and just say, I don't have any beef with you anymore. Let me go my way with my family and you go your way with your family. At the very least, it will be a minimum of forgiveness at the very least. And it might be a lot more. So the question is not if we will forgive, it is when, and it will be how much we will have to forgive. And how much do you want to be forgiven of? Well, everything. I want to be forgiven of everything I ever did to hurt myself and to hurt others. And I want to extend that forgiveness to everybody else, even if it's difficult. I want to find a way. Our wounds are massive, but forgiveness is always bigger, and mercy is always bigger, and peace is always bigger. And it's always there. You can reach for it and have it as soon as you want it. And if you don't find it in you at the moment, you can pray or whatever method of getting yourself centered that you understand or um, counseling with someone you trust or something that can help you. Um, even if forgiveness, quote unquote, takes a long time, the forgiveness doesn't take a long time. It's the holding on to what isn't, holding on to what still is hurting us that takes a long time. But the moment at which we become ready, forgiveness is always instant. 
the thing that takes a long time is us still holding on and taking a look at what we're holding on. We keep, you know, we keep kind of um, stalking about it, saying, hmm, do I want to give this up? Do I want to be this free? Do I want to be this relieved? Do I want to give up my right to be, continue to feel hurt? Do I want to, you know, I still want to help that other person who hurt me to do the job even when they're not there. I'm going to keep destroying myself with the energy that they planted instead of rooting it out like a weed. But at the point where you go, okay, I think I'm ready, it's just, and it goes. Forgiveness is instant when you're ready. And you can be as ready as you want, whenever you want. And I am, I'm, I'm not trying to make light of it and light of the things that we've gone through because I have hated and been hurt for decades on things. So I've been there and done that, but the moment at which I forgave was instant, and then I asked myself, why did I do the decades? Why did I do that? It's just, forgiveness, if it doesn't, if it still needs to be said, is about you and your freedom. It's not about approving of what people did. But at the same time, we have to see that other people are wounded too, and they're behaving from their wounds, even if they're behaving very badly. They're behaving from their wounds. And we are on a place and in a planet that is confounding. It is a confounding place. And we get ourselves wrapped up in being oppressors and being violators and being crucifiers and being um, people who shed blood. We can get caught up in that so easily. And even if we don't do it personally, we can add to the um, idea that it should be done by someone. You know, maybe not us. Maybe not. Maybe we're not the ones that actually pound the nails into someone's hands, metaphorically, we leave that job to the centurions, right? We get the centurions to do our jobs, but we're the pilots, we're the priests, we're the, and by pilot, I mean the, if I'm using the story in the New Testament as um, the template and pilot was the governor, the civil governor, the priests, the rabble, were we're that and we're saying yes you know these people need to be killed and thank heavens I don't have to actually do it I don't actually have to hold the gun we'll have the centurions do it and in, and the centurions are actually are actually innocent even though they're doing the actual physical work of pounding the nails they're actually innocent because they are the centurions have been created by a paradigm of people who want blood and the centurions would probably just as well go home they might be kind of weak people because they're like they don't know how to say no, like, no, I'm not going to be pounding nails into people's hands. I'm going to go, you know, they're caught up in it too, but they're actually the innocent ones. So it's us who call for blood in one way or another, by watching the news, by be being afraid, by misunderstanding a group of people, by misunderstanding ourselves. Anyway, I kind of went off on a tangent. I didn't know where I was going to go with that, but wow. So, but the point is, is yes, our wound on this world is big personally and to, together, but it will end well, okay? It's just that if you want to do it now, instead of waiting another 10 or 20 years, if you want to do it now in your world, in your piece of the world, you can, you don't have to wait, and you don't have to fear some destruction. We do pass through trials that look like destruction but we can always come out and get a side of them and we have the wound, but we also have the opportunity for how big that healing is going to be. So it's the wound, the destruction is never the end of the story. It's definitely part of it because to say otherwise is just not realistic. There's plenty of destruction. It's just not the end of the story. The healing is, okay? Either in this lifetime or the next, and a lot of us do have to do more things after this life, but... If you're listening to the sound of my voice, you've got time to do it in this life, so believe. <laughs> See you.